Hello everybody, welcome to Technic Tuesday. Today we're going to be making a bay window card. It folds flat to go in the envelope and looks like this. And then when it arrives, the recipient tucks the little flap under the greeting and it makes a bay window shape. So rather clever. This is the one that we're going to be making today using the Gnomes designer series paper, but I did go ahead and make a few samples Using the pool party, Christmas is a coming. The holidays are almost upon us, so I've got to stop thinking Christmas thoughts. And I thought, well, let me go back to using tropical ideas with the pool party. So again, it's the same concept, of course. Tucks in, folds flat for the envelope. This is a rather tropical one using the palm set. I then went back to a fallish one and a little bit of a masculine card I felt. Again, bay window, bay shaped. This one just, you can use it for any season really. And then I thought, well, if it's a bay window, let's make it be a window. So I did that. So I got it, I made it a window. I even put window dressings on it. Sarah Lee, the lady that used to do all those window dressings, she'll be so proud of me using the gnome from the gnome's paper. And then it suddenly occurred to me that if this is the bay window, you should be looking out of a bay window, not looking in. So that should have been an interior look, but you know, it was a window and I was having fun. So don't shoot the messenger. All right, so back to the one that we're going to make. It's using the gnome's designer series paper. This is what it looks like. As always, of course, all the cutting, scoring directions will be in the bottom. There's not that many of them, so it's actually quite a quick and easy card. It's a piece of 11 by four and a quarter. It's scored at five and a half as usual, but there are quite a few extra little score marks. So I did them already. So there's one at three eighths. I'll just get my bone folder. There's a one at one and seven eighths, three and five eighths, five and one eighth, and then our usual lovely comfort level of five and a half. So that's what makes the card, oops, go in half and fits in the envelope and everything else just tucks against it. So it doesn't really matter which way you've scored it, they will always fall back on themselves. This little section, this little th three eighths needs to be stuck down. So I'm going to do that first, actually. I'm just going to use some tear and tape. Don't get excited because I'm putting it on. I am going to cut it because, you know, I am me after all. So a bit of cut tear and tape. Peel the backing off and stick that down and that's the first step. Now the paper, you need two pieces, you need four pieces, you need two pieces cut at one and three eighths and two pieces cut at one and five eighths. I know there's an awful lot of eighths in there guys but you'll forgive me because it's such a nice card. However, to get a continuity of the card stock as it goes across, if it was just snowflakes or higgledy piggledy swirls or anything, it wouldn't really matter. You could just cut two one and a th one and three eighths and two one and five eighths. But because we want them to flow across the front of the card, we do need to cut them individually. So the first one is one and three eighths, then one and five eighths. Then back to one and three eighths. And then this last piece is one and five eighths. This was actually a piece of the designer series paper and it was, before we chopped it in half without announcing, it was four by six and then it divides nicely. And of course, four by six, if you want to make multiples of the same card, you get two sixes across the 12 by 12 and you get three fours. So you can actually get six of these cards from one piece of designer series paper if you were so inclined. So 
what we need to do now is go ahead and bring everything down into the shot, which would be awfully helpful, Alison, and bring down the card. So we're just going to attach each one in turn in the order that we cut them. So like I say, it keeps the continuity of what there was. See that one matches up with that one even though it's going to be moved across an eighth of an inch to go on the next panel. So I'm just lining it up between the score lines. And then the second one in three eighths goes on. What is Basically, I suppose you could call it the outside of the card. And then the last piece is going on the inside, but it's going to go right up against the edge because then it just gives a little bit more to have the bay window stick to. It's a bit like an easel card, really. Same concept. So we will just attach this one to the outer edge and then that's how it will fold flat for the envelope and then when it makes the bay window the more you have the bayer your window can be so a little bit of stamping now i'm going to be using the decorated with happiness stamp set and bermuda bay ink so we're going to pop christmas greetings on the smaller piece of cardstock and this is one and five eighths by an inch and on gets layered onto one and three quarters by one and an eighth but like I say as always the sizes and the cuttings and the scorings are always in the bottom and then we're going to add the greeting the rustling as those of you who use polymer stamps will know we're just taking it off the cellophane backing putting it onto the acrylic block and then ink it up oops and pop it on and then we give it a quick wash and then peel off the polymer from the acrylic block and loudly put it back in its place it goes back into its box nice and compact so that's all the stamping done now we just need to attach the greetings to the appropriate layer the christmas greetings can go on there The seasonal wishes can go on there. So what we need to do now is we need to make this have something it can stick under. And we're going to do that using dimensionals. So what you need to do is it will fall flat to go in the envelope, like I said. Bring it back to the edge of the piece of designer series paper that we put on the inside. And that's where it's going to go. This is going to butt up against the edge the same. So we know that this will come in that far. So in order to have it stay like that, we need to hold it in place where it's going to be. Oops. And pop some dimensionals right up against that piece of cardstock so it doesn't go any further than that and then of course we want them to be on the other side so we can just pop those on peel the backings off quickly fling them across the stamping room where I go and tidy up later and then this will go right to the edge of the cardstock like I said we know that these two dimensionals are in the right place 
because we measured it with the wind with the window open and there we go so that's how it stays like i say it's sort of like an easel card and then it helps the bay window be bayed bold not quite sure what the the verb version of that word is but then we'll pop a couple of dimensionals on the back of the front greeting and then we can just stick this on there and there you go quick and easy this one is nice and light so it's light enough inside to write the greeting to your recipient snap there's the two that well that's the one that i had made and this is the one that we've just made and then to bring them back in that's using the pool party with more of a summery tropical theme this is darker which is why i put the lighter color inside so it can be seen when you write on it and there's my sadly i was so enthusiastic about it inside out bay window that's actually a window so that's it my loves if you like what you've seen please like the video if you want to subscribe i would love that if you press the bell it will ring on a tuesday and you can go oh alison's posted a technique tuesday and last but not least thanks so much for watching